This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Oh, God. By the way, look at Mike Jackson here, Alabama's own. Mm. And by the way, he just worked impact a couple of years ago. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, this is 35 years ago and he just wrestled just like in the last two years with impact. And by the way, still looks the same, still works the same. Yeah. He's kept himself in fighting shape all these years. Yeah. Mike is, uh, without a doubt, Mike, without a doubt is, uh, like a freaking legend, right? I mean, he really is territory legend for sure. Mm Mm-hmm. Give me a time code where you are. Cause my uh, right pop- now I'm at seven minutes and three seconds, four seconds, five yeah. seconds, six seconds, seven seconds. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to mention you were exactly right. Uh, Garvin did finish up in a uh, world class in 84 and then jumped to, uh, the AWA. He would team with Mr. Electricity, Steve Regal. No, that's not Lord, you know, from WCW. That's not William. Right. Anyway, though, uh, he eventually drops the tag straps. They have a tag team title uh, run there. And once uh, Regal and uh, Garvin drop them to Hall and Henning, uh, he's here in the NWA now. So sure. he had been a big deal everywhere. But I think when I think of Jimmy, man, I think of those old music videos and world class and the famous feuds he had out there. I mean, and Precious and uh, all that went with it. Yeah, she was. Uh, yeah, I loved Precious, man. And we'll talk more about him. I, I really did. She was a, she was a good lady. I mean, she, re, she had real big boobs, but she was a good lady. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I mean, real big boobs. As a but, reminder, this show was filmed on February 22nd. Mm-hmm. Uh, later that night, you're going to do uh, a double, uh, two shows. Of course, Mount pilot, North Carolina at the East Surrey high school. It's one show. And Roanoke, Virginia Civic Center gets the other show. So it's pretty easy to tell what's the A and the B show. <laughs> We're at the Civic Center for one and a high school for the other. Oh. Uh, the high school show, I'm not exactly sure what happened. I'm getting these results from the history of WWE.com if you'd like to check it out. Uh, but the Civic Center show, we saw Manny Fernandez and Ron Garvin beat the Midnight Express by DQ. Uh, and then we would see uh, Magnum TA fight Nikita Koloff to a double count out at the 13 minute mark. And believe it or not, it was announced here that Dusty Rhodes is going to challenge for the world championship on March 9th. And that was one of the ways that you, you sold tickets back in the arena days, especially, you know, here before everything was on TV every single night, it was more enhancement matches like this Mm -hmm. is during a show, you know, you would have an intermission or whatever, but beforehand you would have a big angle or a big match or a big announcement. And tickets are on sale now at the box office, right? right? Exactly. That's how I, I may have told you the story or not, but I, I, I really love talking about stories in my fandom. Yeah. Almost as much. I like talking about stories when I was working early in the business, but that's how we, here's how we got our tickets in Greensboro. We would, uh, or here's how we know to come back, um, at, at intermission. Uh, Truck and Tom Miller would say, the next event coming to the Greensboro Coliseum will be uh, Sunday. It was always on a weekend. Well, Sunday, February 9th. Right. And so we would say, mark that down. We're going to come back. So that was the only way we knew. Uh, there was no internet, obviously. We couldn't get the Greensboro paper. That's just because. So there was one time that he said Sunday or whatever, and they changed the date to Saturday. And we drove all the way from Virginia to Greensboro, three hours Mm. in my VW Beetle. Okay. Mm. Four of us drinking beer, boom, putting a bag, drunk driving, all that shit you shouldn't do. Got down to the Greensboro Coliseum and it wasn't there. Now I remember there was a place right across the North Carolina line, this old shack, like near beside a, a filling station that always had the, the big posters. And that's where I collected my posters. And, uh, what do you mean? You'd go over there and say, Hey, can I have this one? No, I'd steal it. Oh, uh, okay. they just, they would, uh, they would like, uh, uh, take, uh, staples, staple gun. And, and you just it ripped up. it out. I just ripped it off. And I had a big stack of them, which I bet you Jackie Crockett's got. And I ain't going to argue because I left them all in Jim Crockett's office. I mean, big stack of them. That is my late childhood. Uh, 
So I, I we we pulled over and I looked at that. I said, man, that that event was yesterday. That can't be right. I looked at the guys. I said that event was yesterday. And they said, well, what the fuck are we doing here? I said, oh, no. I said, let's go on in because maybe the the sign's wrong. We went into the Greensboro Coliseum. Nobody's there. We turned around, went back home. Six hours on the road, a lot of beer, no wrestling. But <laughs> we were depending on trucking Tom Miller's, you know, telling us right. Yeah. That's so uh, after that, I started to order tickets by mail. Mm, I would call the, me again. Yeah. Yeah. I would call the box office and I would tell them what tickets I wanted. I would, you know, ringside tickets. Yes. I would like, I had my row number and my seat number last three or last four seats where the heels came out. Um, and I had my row number, my seat number that I wanted and I would pay for it. I guess I would send them a, uh, a money, a postal money order. And they would send the tickets in the mail. And that's how we got them after that. So there you go, man. Memories of being a VW Beetle. Yeah. VW Beetle. We had What's two guys. That? Nothing. If, well, if you got two big old drunk guys in the back, they're, they're miserable, right? Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was it. That was us. A neighbor. One was Billy Fridley and the other one was Hippie. That was his name, Billy Fridley and Hippie in the back. God, how those memories come flooding back of this shit. But the WWE used to back then, they used to have like a main event, right? Right before. Oh, yeah. So you would get excited about buying tickets at yep. intermission. It became uh, common during the Hogan era. Uh, and a lot of people would be critical of Hogan and say, oh, it's because he wanted to get back to the hotel and have room service. Yeah. And I'm sure that was, you know, a, a nice perk. But the real thing is we want to sell the return tickets right now. And yeah. if you do it at the end of the show, people are going to get frustrated and want to get on the road and get home. It's late. And we got school tomorrow, whatever. Right. But if you're going to take an intermission anyway, Hey, we don't make any money. If you go piss and we don't make any money. If you go buy popcorn, the venue keeps that. But if we get your ass to stand in line and buy a ticket during intermission, well, that's a win. Mm -hmm. And they even position the card just so everybody understands the way wrestling used to be. The match after intermission intermission was known as the popcorn match mm -hmm. and they would put something on that wasn't that significant. So if you missed it because you're getting popcorn, didn't really matter. Yeah. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.